Once upon a time, in London, England, lived a boy who started making films from the age of seven. However, nobody ever imagined that one day this boy would become the famous director known today as Christopher Nolan. But how did Christopher Nolan become a renowned director? And why did he become a director? Is it true that he always carries a flask of hot tea on scent? Did he really take 10 years to write Inception? And is it true that he didn't have a personal email address or cell phone? Does his wife really co-produce all of his movies? And what was his life like before fame? It's time for me to answer all of these questions and more, since this is A S M R. Aaron, back at it again with another daily video to help you relax. So lay back and enjoy the ride. I hope this video gets you through your day, or even better, I hope this read helps you gently fall asleep. I can't wait to get started. This is the tale of Christopher Nolan. Born on July 30th, 1970, in London, England, Christopher Nolan started creating films as a child, making his first short at the age of seven. Nolan traveled between Chicago and London while growing up. His mother was from America and his father was from Britain, and eventually went on to attend University College London, where he studied English literature and joined the film school's society. He created shorts like Tarantula, Larceny, and Doodlebug before releasing longer form work. Nolan's major film debut, following, was a black and white, small budget work about a lonely writer who's obsessed with following strangers and then partners with a burglar. The film's unconventional, non-linear narrative scheme helped garner interest in Nolan's work and propelled him to his next film, Memento, the noirish indie film starred Guy Pearce as an amnesiac man who relies on Polaroids and copious note-taking while seeking vengeance. Nolan adapted the work from a story written by his brother, Jonathan Nolan, and the film received two Oscar nominations for its editing and screenplay. Nolan continued presenting psychological thrillers with the remake Insomnia, starring Al Pacino as a police officer in Alaska, handling a murder investigation while contending with the lingering guilt. The director's career then traveled into the stratosphere when he agreed to helm the relaunch of the comic book hero Batman with the 2005 film Batman Begins, starring Christian Bale as the titular character. The movie went on to earn more than $372 million worldwide. Nolan's next release, 2006's The Prestige, a well-received story about dueling magicians starring Bale, Hugh Jackman, and Scarlett Johansson. In July 2008, Nolan's Batman sequel, The Dark Knight, opened and set the record as having the highest weekend gross in the United States at $158 million. Knight went on to become one of the top five highest grossing films in America, while the production also received an avalanche of acclaim, including several Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. Sadness marked the proceedings. Heath Ledger, who starred as the villain The Joker, died from an accidental prescription drug overdose before the film was released. Ledger won a Golden Globe and Oscar posthumously for his work, and Nolan accepted the Globe award on Ledger's behalf. Two summers later, Nolan returned to the box office with Inception, starring Leonardo DiCaprio as the leader of a group of dream-traveling mercenaries.
The film was another critically lauded blockbuster for the director, and won four Academy Awards for its technical wizardry. Nolan followed Inception with the third blockbuster film in the Batman franchise, 2012's The Dark Knight Rises, this time starring Anne Hathaway as Catwoman and Marion Cotillard, who was also in Inception, as Miranda Tate. Nolan was the sole screenwriter for Following and Inception. Excluding Insomnia, he has shared writing credits for his other films with Jonathan Nolan, among others. In the autumn of 2014, Nolan returned to the big screen with Interstellar, a nearly three-hour sci-fi epic that follows the journey of a team of astronauts seeking a new world for the inhabitants of a besieged Earth. The visually arresting, existential film stars Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, and Michael Caine, among others. In 2017, the acclaimed director brought another epic to the big screen, the World War II film Dunkirk, built around three storylines offering different perspectives on a dramatic turn of events in 1940. Dunkirk earned mostly rave reviews for its portrayals of the tensions and terrors of war, picking up Golden Globe nominations for Best Motion Picture, Drama and Best Director, as well as an Academy Award nod for Best Director. Nolan's movies are known for their intellectualism, psychological depth, and unorthodox storytelling. Both Following and Memento had non-chronological narrative structures, with Memento receiving much of its attention for unfolding episodically in backwards time. An Inception has stories that exist within other stories, as the characters explore the realm of a person's highly layered unconscious mind. The director's work has also focused on male protagonists, who try to come to grips with their past while working through complex challenges of the present day. Women in his films have been written as allies, heroes and or romantic interests, some of whom become casualties as well. Nolan imbues vivid artistic sensibilities into films that are positioned as mainstream entertainment, as seen with the imagery and cinematic choices that abound in the Batman series, Inception, and Interstellar, with scenes resembling surreal paintings given life. Nolan's choices have significantly influenced filmmaking, proving that complexity can exist in the commercial. Nolan has dual citizenship within the United States and Great Britain, and is married to Emma Thomas, who has worked as a producer on all of his feature films. The couple has four children. In Nolan's oeuvre, Inception stands tall. It has the essence of a project near to his heart, and indeed, Nolan admits he had wanted to make a movie about the nature of dreams since he was a child. As the multi-layered plot developed in his mind, he opted to use a heist movie plot and structure. Though the building blocks were in place, Nolan struggled to find the empathy at the core of his story. It ultimately took him a full ten years to get it right. If you've ever tried to find Chris Nolan's Twitter handle or Instagram account, you undoubtedly came up dry. Beyond social media, the famed director doesn't even have an email address. He's not a Luddite, he's just practical. As he sees it, I don't find email would help me with anything I'm doing, I just couldn't be bothered about it. The same rules apply to his use of a cell phone. To take calls, he simply borrows the phone from his production crew. What fuels Christopher Nolan's creativity and focus? His writing process is the stuff of legend. But when he's on set, it's something far simpler that keeps him in the game. Tea. Earl Grey tea, in fact. Nolan loves the stuff so much that he told the New York Times, my assistant can get me tea on a glacier. And so ends the tale of the famous director Christopher Nolan, who lived happily ever after, making films because he just loves to be behind the camera.